to another episode of the Short Shoot Triathlon Show, taking in everything swim, bike and run. And this episode is coming to you from Jersey in the Channel Islands, where the dust is just settling after a crazy day of Super League Triathlon Racing. My name is Will McCloy. Joining me on the show today, you can see them in the little squares, a four-time world champ and COVID positive, Chris McCormack, a four-time world champ and COVID negative, Tim Don, former world number one duathlete athlete and unsure on her current COVID status, Annie Emerson. And a woman who wouldn't have been able to do what she's done over the past three weeks with even one mild hangover. Jess Learmonth is here as well as our special guest. We've got another one later on in the show. Hello, everyone. Forgetting all the people as the regulars, we're going to go straight to Jess. How are you feeling after yesterday, mate? Third win in three weeks, but still with work to do in Malibu with extra points on the line. So the job isn't done yet. Three from three, though. How good? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for having me at first of all. And, um, yeah, I feel all right, you know, this morning. And uh, like you said, it's not finished, unfortunately. I think uh, Malibu is going to be quite interesting. So, uh, But yeah, other than that, I feel all right. Just a bit of a deep voice and uh, yeah, I feel fine. It, it almost seems like you haven't been able to believe the efforts that you've had. Or maybe that's just your, your post-race interviews. It just always, you were like, oh, I just ran and swam and biked and somehow I won again. When are you going to start <laughs> believing? When are you going to start to get a bit of arrogance about you that that, that you, you managed to avoid after all these years of triathlon racing. I know it must be so annoying, but I swear that's what I, I honestly didn't think that this had happened. And certainly after Tokyo, just because it's been a bit like quite difficult to get back into training and stuff. And I've been like burning the candle at both ends type of thing. So I was quite, yeah, shocked. And like, even if you ask John or anyone that I don't think they'd think that I'd, you know, win all three, that's for sure. So, yeah, it's not just me that doesn't think that. A a lot of other people do. But, um, yeah, I think things have just fallen well. Because, like, with Georgia having a few uh, hiccups and stuff, it just changes the race slightly. So, uh, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. Obviously, I want to open it up to everyone. And obviously, all of you witnessed what a great win it was in the women's. Uh, we'll talk about the men's a little bit later on. Maka, how are you, mate? I know that we put out a um, or Super League put out a press release. You're so famous that you get a press release when you get COVID. The rest of us just get going told to isolate. But uh, how are you feeling? And um, obviously, we're not going to see you in Malibu as well. But from your position up high at the, in the penthouse of the Radisson here in St. Helier, um, you managed to watch Jess just streak the field. Yeah, so much for privacy, eh? I was hoping to sit up here and no one would know I had COVID, but, yeah, the press release went out and I went, oh, okay, there you go, the world knows. So, um, yeah, it's not, I wouldn't call it the penthouse here. I was, I was stuck at the far end. When you get the disease, they stick you at the far end. It just happens to be where the finish line is. So I had the best seat in the house to actually watch the racing, but I'm fine. I'm, luckily, I'm double vaccinated. I, I was shocked to be... To be uh, to go positive because I have no symptoms at all, and I'd I'd been clear three days before, so I don't know where I uh, where I picked it up, but oh good, it was uh, it was it was very very interesting for the first time after all these years of Super League racing being in the the commentary box where you're watching the TV to actually feel the experience of a race from the outside and see the racing unfold and happen. I actually think I enjoyed it more than sitting in the commentary box. Oh, well, thanks, mate. Well, That's was, great. It is. Such- no, I, love, I miss I miss being there with you, but it's such an exciting format. It is such an exciting race. And yeah, as you said, I was very fortunate to be able to see the entire swim and the entire racing unfold from the position up here. It was it was truly incredible. Incredible racing. Tim Don, uh, your position aloft, the Eagles flying on top of the leaderboard continues, almost unassailable, you would have thought. The cheetahs are fighting off the rhinos, Annie, down the bottom, but TD, how good was Jess and, and, and how good was just overall the Eagles' performance and racing in general? Oh, the racing was just, yeah, awesome. The sun came out and, um, you know, everyone was firing on all, all cylinders. Um, you know, I think Jess doesn't give herself credit. I think at the level that, um, you know, at, right at the pointy end of the race, it's the athletes that make the few mistakes that kind of, you know, do the do the best. And I think, you know, we've seen that. You know, I wouldn't say flawless performances, but, you know, just just every week coming up, turning up and making the fewest mistakes. And that's that's getting to the top of the podium. But, yeah, I mean, first time I've been here in Jersey watching a race and, um, yeah, they turn it on here for the for, for the Super League. So, yeah, to be down there on the ground part of it, it was brilliant. And as you said, you know, great that the Eagles are, are doing so well, um, you know, and I think the yeah, the athletes are loving that. 
No, I am. Woohoo! <laughs> he nearly got a cheater's win yesterday in the men's Annie, but overall, women's race. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. I had its fair share of controversy, and I want everyone just jump in here rather than me just asking everyone questions. But a um, little bit of controversy around Georgia Taylor Brown. I want to get everyone's thoughts on that. Uh, exactly what they thought in that moment, and was the decision made right afterwards? Annie, what did you think first of all? Well, what did I think? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think I heard, oh God, I think it, it's so hard to believe. There is so much going on. Um, there was a lot of noise and I think that it was, you know, such a genuine sort of mistake. And the fact, I think they were quite quick to disqualify her. Uh, initially, we, we were getting this feedback, well, that she, she'd been disqualified. And I was like, oh, you know, surely there should be, you know, she should be allowed to, to fight the argument, to protest. Um, she was very smart to carry on running. Like in commentary, we were like, yeah, that's the right thing to do because we don't know what's going to happen at the end. And then we heard that they disqualified her and I was like, wow, OK, she'd made up the time on the run. She had no one in sight of her. She didn't take someone else's place on the podium. So um, I'm just glad that she was reinstated. That, that is my opinion. I think moving forward, obviously, Super League will look at sort of making sure something like that doesn't happen again. But it was absolutely right that George, Georgia Taylor-Brown got second spot, particularly after riding into the barrier, which no doubt that she was still furious, <laughs> furious about this morning. I mean, it's terrible to say, but it was quite comical. We were like, oh, my God, what is she doing? Head down, straight to the barrier. Like It was almost like she was on a horse that was throwing her off kind of thing as the bite sort of like, Nose died. I kept watching. But anyway, it last so night. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, saddles like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like At least it wasn't like that. <laughs> I feel like Jess, you could just be sitting there and just, hey, hey, Georgia, come look at this and just play it for her again. <laughs> and then again, like, hang on, let's rewind it. All right, on a, at what point did you realize that you'd made a massive rookie error there, Georgia? Are you better you than me, mate? What about you, Mac? What do you think? about all of that, the entire thing, and, and whether it shook out correctly. Because I think that the, the social media response and people who've managed to talk to any of us from a fan perspective or whatever are all happy that it turns out that the, the title yeah. fight's still alive. Look, look I, I, I was part of the technical briefing that was happening in the background. I, I had to be relatively unbiased because she was a scorpion, but I was going bananas. I was going berserk because, you know, there was... Earlier in the week, there was a, 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 a social media post posted by us at Super League that said that the short shoot could be earned on the run. And I heard Michelle Dillon calling out that, that Georgia had earned a, a short shoot. So I could understand the confusion. I know the briefing and everything happened that they, the women were aware of, of where the, the short shoot was allocated. But the confusion you could see in Georgia, and she's, she rectified the issue. And, and in that discussion, we had Michael Thompson from Australia, myself, uh, um, Michael Dulst, all of us, we, you know, look, had it been a group of 10 women together, it may have been a different story. We may have had to make a different call. But but, but both of you were away. You were dominating the race. The, the problem was rectified. She completed the course. It was the right call to do. And uh, and I, you know, it, I, I just felt for her. I just, she, she's she's such a fair, honest racer. And she is, she's not a not an athlete that, that, that would do anything to, to bend the rules. So, it was the right decision to keep her in second place, and I'll I'll argue with anyone who who disagrees with that. And uh, it was uh, it was it was it was a sad, I guess, ending to what was could have been would have been an amazing race between the two of you. So you saw her very very disrupted by by that flag coming up and saying she was eliminated. You saw her head go elsewhere, and uh, and uh, I, I felt for I felt for her very much so. All of this dinging in the background, that's Alex Yee trying to work out how to get a laptop to come onto the second <laughs> half of the show. So if we've, we, we've uncovered who it is. He goes, oh, yeah, I need a laptop. Can I yeah. do it with an iPad? No, mate. I know you're 20, but we still have laptops. <laughs> Old people still have laptops. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, what did you I'll think? bring my desktop with me. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a smoke signal version? Um, Jess, what did you think <laughs> about... Uh, first of all, the short shoot, I mean, obviously, did, when you were racing, did you go, bang, I've got two, I know I've got two, despite what was going on uh, on the loudspeakers? Was there confusion for you as well? And also, you know, obviously, George did the right thing. She was reinstated. You must be happy about that because I heard your, your post-race interview and obviously you were a bit disappointed because, of course, Georgia and we everybody loves her. Alex, come on, mate. Come on, mate. Um, 
it was in tears and you were there too. So, I mean, obviously it was, a, it was strange how it shook out, but the short shoot, did you know you had them both? Originally, yes. So when I, when I came onto it, I thought, you know, I've got two short shoots. Um, but then the confusion was when we were coming in for the, the, after the first lap, um, I heard on that Michelle had shouted that we'd got one each. So I was like, and then obviously with all what's going on, it's quite confusing as it is. And I'd not actually had anyone other than Tim tell me that I had the, the short shoot because I, I didn't even see the technical um, official that was meant to tell me, you know, officially if I'd, if I'd got it or not. So then, yeah, going on to the second lap, I was like, oh, God, have I got it wrong? Because obviously you just doubt yourself instantly. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> so I thought, well, I, I've probably got it wrong. Certainly when you've got so much to think about, it's just so confusing. Um, and then it wasn't until I was coming on to the, literally just the finish, Tim shouted again, yeah, you've got two. Because when I was coming on to the, the, the first lap, um, I was trying to ask everybody and it was so weird. Nobody looked at me. Like, I'm not joking. Like, there were so many people watching the race and I kept like shouting at them saying, have I got the short shoot or anything? And everyone just like looked through me. It was really bizarre. I thought, oh. Uh. So then I, I think I even tried to ask the motorbike. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so then I just thought, oh, well, whatever. Um, and then stupidly, I took it. So, you know, like Georgia were probably smart enough to redo her short shoot, whereas I were probably stupid to take mine because I could have got disqualified for no reason. So. Yeah, it was very confusing, but um, it, yeah, like you said, I, I, I thought it was a bit of a shame because it was going to be a good battle because like, I was catching her on the swim, she was gapping me on the run, and then I think if she'd have had, you know, if we'd have been going on to the run together, she probably had gapped me, and then I'd have been able to take the short shoot, so then we probably would have ended up with maybe a sprint finish. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a bit sad, but I'm I'm happy that she got reinstated because it was very very confusing. <laughs> and like we said, it's funny because um, it was really obvious when you're eliminated. So it's like they tell you straight away that you're eliminated, like big flags, you know, it's all up on the big screen. But then if you've got like a short shoot, you don't have a clue. So um, yeah, it was it was bizarre. But I'm I'm glad that she got reinstated because now there's like there's still the battle that continues for Malibu, and you know. It's good. Yeah. Well, Michelle, well, it hasn't, it hasn't stopped Michelle Dillon from uh, launching herself onto the microphone early this morning. That's what we can, for anyone who's listening, that's what we can see. We're right on the course here at Jersey. That's what you can hear in the background. Michelle Dillon going absolutely bananas as the on course commentator, uh, waking everyone up at 6 30 this morning. There you can see uh, age group racing underway. Couldn't get closer to the action than we are right now. Uh, Tim Don obviously gets whatever. Uh, whatever Ruby wants to get. Uh, TD, obviously you you knew what was going on in the time. You were the one to be able to, as the team manager from the Eagles, uh, yell that out. And that's just the little one percenters, mate, that makes the Eagles number one at the moment. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. I was telling everyone, I was telling lots of people what, what was going on. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe the confusion at the end for, for Jess and... Um, and, and Georgia. So yeah, as just said, we just wanted to, and Maka, we just wanted to see a great race. And it was, it was lining up brilliantly because there was, one was going ahead. It was like the red car's faster, the blue car's faster, the red car, the blue. It was like, it was super league racing. It was blooming awesome. So um, yeah, but um, yeah, hopefully it won't happen again. And, and in the end, the Eagles won. So that's all that counts, if I'm honest. So, whatever. <laughs> That's all that's important. Uh, I want to pull out a couple of others and get, get and Jess, I'll get your thoughts first, thoughts first of all, but everyone's at the same time. Vicky Holland having a storm or two. She's in third position at the moment. Four Brits at the top when you add Vicky and Beth Potter, who has really come into her own in this year in terms of Super League racing. And just like Alex Yee has gone from being a fantastic runner to a fantastic triathlete. Uh, and Cassandra Bogrant's returned to form to stand on the podium again after having a couple of tough races. Uh, Jess, out of those... Things that I've mentioned, obviously, you know, with Vicky and Beth, you know, standing head and shoulders above the rest, it must be really great to have that kind of British dominance uh, across the course of this racing season. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think the Brits have been very strong. I think, well, it's probably, the, this podium was the first time we had a, a different nationality on it. Uh, it just shows how strong that we've been. And like you say, yeah, Vic and and Beth have, have come through really well. And they're all, I think, they're, are they tying with Katie for third? I think overall, so it's going to be, yeah, 
Yes, yeah, so Malibu it's going to be really interesting to see you know who who comes through because it's it's going to be a completely different type of event you know there's I don't think it's as technical um and then there's the sea swim added to it uh, there's more points on the line so I think it's going to be really interesting and um yeah the as you say Cassandra's coming back through she's you know taking a bit to warm up and this is what we said originally I don't know if you remember well but it's it'll it just shows you that you know people can perform so differently week on week you know one week they might be slightly off and it's going to be really interesting especially with the long haul travel um to see who comes up and yeah it's going to be a totally different mm. mix I think so it'll be interesting yeah people can perform differently week to week except for you who just performs the same <laughs> Okay, fair. But Mac, you must be happy having uh, Cassandra, your Scorpion, uh, your top Scorpion pick actually, uh, perform so well. Obviously, you picked uh, Cassandra and Georgia back to back. Pretty astute picks, you would think so after this uh, this week's racing, second and third. Yeah, look, uh, just quickly on Vicky Holland. She she was the unsung hero of yesterday's racing. Like from sitting up here, she was on the front of the second bunch. She did the lion's share of of everything in pursuit of of Georgia and Jess up front. She was phenomenal. She had a fantastic first swim, super aggressive on the bike. It's a course she struggled with here in the past, but she's just been on form. I, I think she's come into her own and and she was magnificent. So she was the unsung hero of the race. Cassandra, you know, her, her, her confidence has been bruised by Super League racing. I think she she was expecting to do a lot better in London and, and got shelled. She went backwards very, very quickly. And in Munich last week, the same thing happened. And and I, I think she found some confidence yesterday. She seemed to find that grit. And, uh, you know, I think she'll be very, very happy with that racing. It was good to see because, uh, you know, she was dangling off the back of the bike and she'd find herself back on the run and she'd swim herself into contention. And uh, I just thought it was a, it was a standout performance for her. And that's, she's a confidence athlete. I think she can take that confidence. She, she's the type of athlete that could potentially threaten um, threaten the podium again in, in Malibu because, uh, you know, she'll come off that and she'll feed off that energy. But... You know, there was so much action happening, you know, back there. I thought Katie Seferis was just on and off, on and off all day. And, and as, as you said, Jess, it's going to be very, very interesting to, to see how they travel across to Malibu and, and how the accumulation of four weeks of racing is going to play out after that travel. So it's interesting to see the dynamics change. And, and you know, Katie was, was definitely off yesterday in comparison to both London and, and Munich. So whether that's the, the downward slide or whether it was just a poor performance from the recovery, I, I don't know. But there was some standout races yesterday in both Vicks and Beth and, and Cassandra were those were those athletes outside of UGS and, and GTB. Tim, Annie, anyone else you want to want to pull out or anything else you want to talk about or, or bring to light from the women's race? Obviously, there were some, some great results uh, throughout. Uh, we've mentioned most of them. Uh, Annie, I'll start with you. I mean, is there anything else that really stood out for you out of that women's race? And as we head into Malibu, do you see – uh, and we'll get predictions right now as well from everyone. Do you see anything being any different, or do you see Jess Learmonth, who is still on the show, by the way, uh, just sweeping the whole thing and finally <laughs> giving you that interview? I bloody knew I was going to do this the whole time. I'm sick of being so <laughs> humble. Everyone can suck it. I've got all the money, etc. <laughs> Um, um, well, by the way, just to warn you, Jess, that Will is planning to come and get a loan off you at the end of the <laughs> I did say that. Too. <laughs> um, listen, no, no one's going to bet against Jess. Um, but as Jess rightly says, you know, um, it's still racing. Anything can happen. She seems to execute the perfect race every time. Obviously, great management team behind her. Tim Don. Um, I, I just want to reiterate what Mac has said about Vicky Holland. I think, you know, quite often we'll sort of, you know, just pick up slightly on her biking and that, you know, she sits back, but she, she's been amazing on the bike. So great performance from her. Um, I, and I think um, the travel, the fourth week, the fourth, fourth race in four weeks, you know, will take its toll on some people. So some people are going to perform better than others. And also let's not forget the athletes are tra traveling, um, you know, 10 hour flight, big time um, zone difference. And that will affect some athletes. It won't affect Jess. We know that, right? Let's, <laughs> but some of the athletes might be affected. Um, you know, um, standout performances. Perio had a great race, um, sixth, really strong run, swam a lot better as well. Um, yeah, I mean, just just all round, um, great racing yesterday. Yeah, Tim, you just want to. This is your moment to gloat about the women's race and picking up all the points with Vicky and 
Victoria <laughs> early doors and Jess just being an absolute poker machine of points. Like every time it's just another, like it just keeps paying out, just keeps paying out. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I think though that, that pack, I was amazed how close the women were behind Jess and Georgia. I mean, you know, once the first swim bike run was over, that there's, there was like a, there was like, there was a chase group and then a second chase group. And when they came together, they were, they were working so hard to try and catch Georgia and Jess. So that, that in itself was amazing. But you could have thrown a blanket over them at any at the swim, the bike and the run. And as you said, it was the, the athletes that were the bravest, the ones that were willing to sit closer to the front. They're the ones that, that benefited. But that was, I think, you know, some athletes weren't doing that. Um, Taylor was often yo-yoing off the back. And it was only that last leg where she came to the front. And I think that, that made, gave her the confidence going on to the run. But yeah, we've got, we got three women in third with all on the same points. So I think Malibu, you know, there's going to be races within races. We're going to have the race for the win, the team race, and then a race for the podium. And then um, no one wants to get eliminated in the grand final. And, you know, after the swim, someone's going to get eliminated. It's, it's going to be, yeah, brutal racing out there. So I'm, yeah, just so looking forward to to watching. <laughs> I love the eliminator too. It's just, I love seeing him get the yellow flag. Like we, After the first, after London, I was like, to the TV crew, I was like, let's get more people getting eliminated. Let's see more disappointment. I think we need to continue with that. Let's make sure we capture that moment and replay it in. Like, you can yeah. capture the exact moment somebody's heart breaks. That's what we want to see. Yes. No, they didn't take it on board. We need, heart, <laughs> we need drama. Yeah, that's it. Breaking heart. That's it. That's it. Um, Jess, it's time for you to go swimming. Oh, geez, there's no risk for the wicked, is there? Uh, Thank you so much for taking the time to, to jump on the show with us. Uh, early doors. We're going to swap you out for Alex here in just a second. But uh, I think I speak for everyone on the show and everyone who watches Super League in, in that world. Yeah. Just extremely impressed by what you brought, uh, not only to the arena games, where you completely streeted everyone and picked up every point. You've picked up every single point that's been on offer since you started with Super League. That is now 75 from a possible 75 points. It's time to get arrogant. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah, good job. Yeah, <laughs> well, we've waved goodbye to Jess, and so we bring in another winner. Why not? Alex Yi, fresh off his, uh, I don't know, 56 millimeter win over Johnny Brownlee uh, yesterday afternoon, and sprinted the great Johnny Brownlee to the line. What a race it was, Alex. Congratulations. You've just gone from strength to strength over this three weeks. Uh, fifth, obviously, in London. You picked up a podium uh, in Munich. And I heard you say afterwards, you know, you're still making mistakes. You're still learning those little one percenters. And it's good to have back, back-to-back back racing. And then you put it all together uh, yesterday. How good was that? How are you feeling now reflecting on all of it? Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, ironically, I think yesterday was actually probably physiologically one of my worst races here <laughs> in a way because I – on that first bike, I, I didn't really feel like I had it too much. And then I progressed throughout the rounds, definitely. But I think the thing I got right this week was just being a bit more clinical with everything I was doing. And I think that just shows how important those one percenters are. And it was enough to put me in the mix for that last run. And I, yeah, I came onto that run. Yeah, I, I, some days you have those like those days where you just have have the the legs. And and going into that last turn, I felt fr- pretty good in myself. So yeah, it was a, it was a really good day. Yeah, did you think did you think you had Johnny at the final turnaround? Obviously, you had to run up, maybe make four or five seconds to Hayden. Uh, Hayden was looking like he was really digging deep at that point. Johnny made the move halfway down towards the dead turn at the end, and you went with him immediately. So he went on the inside of Hayden. You went around the outside. Um, and then at that final turn, as you turned behind him, did you think, yeah, I've definitely got this? Because you can pinpoint the exact moment his heart broke with about 20 metres to go, and he looked to the side, and he's like, oh, no. But at that bottom turn, did you did you know? I mean, I've grown up for the last ten years watching Johnny sprint in a uh, in World Series and World Cup races, so I kind of had anticipated the way he was going to do it, and I kind of knew that he was going to go up and try and win that dead turn, and then uh, that was going to be half half the battle was just getting there to that dead turn with him, and then um, so yeah, I think for me, I kind of knew how how he he'd kind of. Uh, operate that and um yeah i just kind of tapped into i guess a bit of my my track track heritage and um yeah just it just worked out some days you have it some days you don't and yeah it was just it was one of those good days 
Absolutely. Well, I open the floor. I'm sure the rest of the uh, our esteemed yeah. panel have some questions uh, for you, Maka. Let's start with you, mate. You've been—I mean, you want to talk to anyone? You've been cooped up already in your hotel room. You can talk to anyone you want, but let's go with Alex. Look, yeah. Look, look. The the, the jersey race has always been dramatic, and and this enduro format is remarkable. But yesterday's race was next level. I was geeking out up here, hovering down, and and I just want to go back to that last run when Hayden roared out of, of transition. And the pace was just red hot. Did you feel that that, that was he was all in and had gone too early? He gapped both you and Johnny and, and and you just seemed to be very, very patient. You ran on the back of Johnny with Vasco Velasa, you ran onto the back of Johnny and, and you sort of you got on did you did you know you were gonna reel him in or or was there a feeling there that he'd gone out too fast or not at all? It was just sort of was opportunistic and he just sort of came back and, and the opportunity provided presented itself. Uh yeah, so so for me, I, I in that T two going into the the last run, I, I messed up putting on one of my shoes and I lost yeah. two or three seconds, and and that was enough for Hayden to kind of get away, and the other two, uh, th- three of them actually to um to pull up the road, um, and then for me at that point, I was just racing the thirty seconds in front of me, and I think super leagues it's so important that you don't get too far ahead of yourself, um, with with super league racing because if you do, then you forget what you're doing at the time and. Uh, because it's, it comes at you so quickly, I think that that was the, the key thing for me is that I was just making sure I was racing that next day so I can making sure I caught up to Kenji and then up to Martin and then Johnny. And then uh, on that last lap, I heard Annie say, oh, there's 800 meters to go. And I was like, this is uh, my wheelhouse now. So hopefully I can see what can happen. And and luckily it was, it was enough to get to get up uh, to, to Hayden. But... For us, we can't we can't see the facial expressions that Hayden was going through. So, so we <laughs> thought he was an absolute flyer. And uh, but yeah, watching the back, I could see him gritting his teeth and really all all in. Um, but yeah, fair play to him. He was he was amazing uh, yesterday and uh, all the way across the, the board as well. His swims were exceptional uh, yesterday, which I thought was was really really impressive. So it's exciting going into the uh, eliminator at the end. Tim, what about you? I mean, you're sitting there so smugly, just just re- reminding yourself how how good your selections were. But what did, what do you think of Alex's performance? And what did you think of this race? Because for me, it probably calls to mind like the Cassandra and Katie Singapore finish was the other one that stands out in terms of great finishes overall. I think this one probably tops that one. But obviously, to have an eagle do the job, but also just in in all of your experience of watching racing, where does this one sit in terms of how it played out? Uh, all of the the twists and turns. The short shoot with uh, with Vince and Vasco, maybe, and we discussed it off air. Maybe it, they they burn a few matches, too many matches early to earn them, and, and and how it all panned out in the end. You know, yeah, I think um, this is uh, you know, except for Hayden in London, where he 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 actively went for that short shoot, and you can see the fist pump. Vasco had a game plan. Um, he maybe executed his run one leg too early because he really went for it in that middle run, um, not the last run. Um, and again, you saw um, the Scorpion slow down in the end of the first swim, so Vince could get the short shoot. So there was some tactics there, but it was two races. I mean, I thought I was watching a mile race. You know, um, there was a brave Kiwi on the last run. A brave Kiwi went, tried to front run it. It's very rare to front run a mile on the running track. You know, as soon as he went, I thought he's, he's not going to win. You know, unless he's got El Rouge legs today, it's not going to happen. Um, and I think maybe it was a blessing for Alex that he his transit. If Alex had gone with him, who knows? You know, he could have burnt his matches early. You know, Alex just sat there, sat there, and then it was it was like watching a distance race. You know, you had that. You didn't need to be first into that corner, but you needed to be on the shoulder. And it was just like coming off the bend. You know, f- uh, you know the final down the home, home straight, and you don't want to be in first. You know, sprint at the Tour de France. You don't want to be first. You want to be sitting second and back yourself. And that's what Alex did. And as he said, you know, his run heritage and you know track skills are renowned. But let's not let's not forget his swimming and his biking. That I think it was the first race he was he was isolated, and Alex just worked. You know, it's not that you would give up, but he he was fighting to get to the front. He wasn't content to wait for the group behind him. And I think. Alex won and, um, you know, it was dramatic, but I think, you know, that was a more mature performance than Alex is going to know. And I would say, you know, in a couple of months' time when he looks back, that was an amazing complete triathlon. Yeah. So I agree. tip my hat massively to Alex. That's fantastic. Mm, and undoubtedly his <laughs> finest race of 2021 and biggest highlight without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> and I'll think of another one that even sits in the wheelhouse. 
He had the Eagles kit on. What more can you say? That's it. That's it. 100%. I totally agree. I can't think of anything else he's done that even comes close Hold on. to what happened Let's yesterday. Hold on. It's funny you say that. Is it? It was, this is metal. Uh, this is metal. <laughs> is that a chocolate coin? <laughs> this is a chocolate say? metal. <laughs> what are you saying, Alex? Sorry. Yeah. It is, it's funny you say that because it was me and Johnny won two and Jess and George won two as well, which is the mixed relay team. Yeah. So I guess it just shows that, yeah, over that short distance, I guess we're, we're starting to learn over that. And it's, yeah, it's exciting. And I guess it just, just shows that we weren't one trick, one trick pony. For that. Well, if that, if that was your only one trick, it was the right, <laughs> it was the right trick to pull uh, on the right day in Tokyo. Uh, Annie as well, like looking back over that men's race, Points that stood out for you, uh, and I'll open the floor to everyone because you know there was so much to that, as you said, like team tactics when Matty Hauser gave us on Lewis thing, and then obviously we haven't even spoken about Vince. Essentially, I mean, we were worried whether he was we were, he was injured. We know he was battling an ankle injury. We thought something maybe was wrong with his shoes. It just, from what we know, it, he just ran out of steam. Um, Annie, what, what was your your take on the men's race overall? I, I think it was one of the great great enduros and one of the great races the Super Leagues had. Yeah, definitely. I think what really stood out about Alex's performance was, and I think you'll agree, so you've got the guys on the front, the Brownleys, Martin, um, all like incredible, the, the best, you know, in, in triathlon racing. And Alex yo-yoed, and somehow you had the strength to keep bringing yourself back into the race. So you never threw your toys out of the pram, where I think a lot of other athletes would have done. You're one of the youngest guys racing. And it must have been bloody tough because you must have put in a monumental effort at times to, to keep yourself in that race. So when it came down to that final run, you were there. And I don't know if you agree with that, but that's what it looked like. The, the fight you gave yesterday was monumental, which ultimately you know gave you the victory at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for yeah, for me, it was, it was definitely tough being off the back and... Uh, coming back into the race and coming back out. Um, but for me, I feel like I can, one of my strengths is that I can access my top ends like quite, quite a lot and quite a few times rather than, uh, I mean, the sustained effort is, is a different thing, but yeah, I feel like I can access that top ends um, quite frequently, which I think is good to this, this uh, type of format, the Enduro. So um, that played to my strength in a way. Um, I, th I think it could have been a totally different race if I'd have had a bit more confidence on the first, bike and then just um got into the race straight away um unfortunately uh royally crashed in front of me uh in that first roundabout just as we were about to kind of get onto the race and uh honestly looking at what he did he did absolutely nothing wrong and when you see something like that happen and him not really put a foot wrong not pedal early or or anything like that or yeah it was it was a bit it shook me up a little bit and maybe i was a bit cautious over the first first bike leg but um the second bike leg, I was really pleased. I managed to ride back onto the group and stuff like that. And for me, it just, yeah, cements that I, I guess I, I don't want to be seen as just a, a, a truck, like a triathlete who can, yeah, who can, who can just run really well. I want to be seen as a person who's a bit more of a complete athlete. And I think that's uh, what we've seen the likes of Vince and Johnny. They're like the champions because they're complete athletes and they have that, that mentality about them. So, yeah, that, that's kind of why I aspire to be like. Well, I think if you're going to do three triathlons back to back to back, you pretty much, and, and win it, I think you can probably say you're the complete triathlete. Maka, what were you about to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what we forget, is it's the enduro format. And, you know, we've seen amazing battles over this format because of the, the fatigue that comes about because of the excitement over that first race. And people bury too deep in that first race. We've seen... Vincent Lurie and Henry Schumann in years past have amazing races with Richard Murray riding back onto the group. And what we saw yesterday, when you implement that short shoot and that first swim and bike, Vincent and these, they go into the red to get those short shoots and you have to pay for that at some point. You, you don't get the opportunity on this course to bring that heart rate down, to, to flush that lactate out, and you can only go into the red so many times. And the two athletes who got the short shoot were shelled in the last you know, halfway through the event. So they went after those short shoots. They were aggressive in that first race to get them. And and, and it, it looked like it, it it suffered. So the athletes that were sitting back, and not sitting back is the wrong word, but were out of that aggressive action early and were able to build through the distance, build through the, the, the three races, 
came to the forefront. I thought Kenji was amazing. I thought Johnny was just consistently all over the top. And I think, Alex, you're, you're underselling yourself. I thought you had the most remarkable Absolutely. race. You, 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 you were polished through the, the, the areas you need to be. You transitioned. You had one or two soft transitions out of nine, which were just amazing. You, you used your, your talent to run yourself back into position. You rode into position. You avoided that crash with, with Royley on that roundabout. Oh, you're amazing. Like it's, it's, it's a format that was built to put people under duress. It's the toughest format in Super League by far. And, mate, you rose to the occasion. It was, it was the best race in the history of Super League I've ever witnessed. And uh, full credit to you, mate. That was amazing. Amazing. Well done. I, I've never been so excited watching a triathlon event in my life. It was unreal. Imagine waking up in the morning on a Sunday and just having Chris McCormack just blow smoke towards you about how great you are <laughs> for two straight minutes. No, I don't get, oh, I don't get any compliments in a whole year, okay? Uh, but that's the way the bus set, Well, Mac has got a high bar, and that's where you've got to get, man. So, yeah, but I agree with everything Mac has said. I said, when you watch that race next week, a month's time, yeah. um, it, it is a more mature race than you realise. And, well, you're a lovely person. Oh, thanks, mate. That's, you're not. Hang on. <laughs> Just writing it in my diary. <laughs> hang on. Tim does it. Well. <laughs> oh, big day today. Red letter day. Um, now, I, I, and obviously, we, we talked about this a little bit in commentary, and um, and we talked about changing of the guards and stuff, and it's easy to say that because Vince, you know, has been so dominant, and, and obviously Johnny's up there. But Alex leads a, a little group that have seemed to – you know, have risen to the top a fair bit across the course of the last couple of weeks. And I'll pull out people like a Kenji Nina who has figured in the back end of races. Vasco Velasa, we know about. Seth Ryder has been a great addition late on. And these are guys that, you know, we haven't seen in this type of racing before. We've seen Vasco, but this new generation, and this is a young man's game, and we know that. And a guy, the class of a Vince or a Johnny, it almost reminds me of like a Djokovic and a Federer who just keep doing the job year in, year out, while all these other guys are starting to take a slam off them here and there, and we see that continuing and happening more and more. How good is it, and Macro, I want to open it to you first, is that you see guys like Anina and Velasa and Ryder, and there's others that just escape me at the moment, uh, you're sort of cutting their teeth in Super League, or not necessarily cutting their teeth, but rising to the top in the same way that a Hayden Wild did two years ago. Well, I think, you know, you know, with with Alex, with Hayden, like I said, Vasco, this is their style of racing, and and and, and you're seeing the older generation, I'm with you, I hate saying the older generation because in no way am I discrediting where they are in their athletic career. But it, it is very, very difficult to continue to stay on your game in this style of racing. You, you cannot make mistakes. You, 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 it's hard to stay at the front all the time, especially when people are breathing down your neck. And, and I love the aggression of a Hayden Wild, the way he races, the way he takes it to him. And that, that laissez-faire type attitude where it's like, I'm, I'm spontaneous. I'm just going to go for it. And I, I no longer hold these champions. I respect them, but I no longer hold them as the standard. I want to be there. And that's the big difference. It's a, it's a shifting of a mindset as opposed to the changing of a guard. And once that mindset shifts, um, you know, you, you see these results happen. But I, you know, I think Kenzie's been an amazing addition to the to the series. He's, he's His swim's remarkable. He put himself in the runs constantly. He stayed in the action. And I, I wish we had another enduro format. I, you know, watching all the formats, it is definitely the most enjoyable format to watch because of the late race fatigue, right? The, the, you see that the blow-ups when they happen, they are dramatic. In the other events, we get the rest. And so you can sort of fudge your way through it. But in this one, there is no break. There is no rest. And when an athlete explodes, like we saw with Vincent Louis, and actually I want to ask you, Alex, were you guys aware that Vincent had popped? Because it looked like Johnny put the boot down, you had a glance across and you applied some serious pressure to keep him off the back. He was able to swim on into the, in, on that third swim, but again, he couldn't get on. What, what was going through your head when you saw that happening? I think the huge amount of pressure was put on on the second run. I think Hayden really hit that second run hard. Um, yeah. I think he saw that Vince was under pressure and um, yeah, that second run was quick. Um, so I think that was kind of where the, the huge yeah. kind of damage was done because Though he could swim back on, if you're redlining at that point, there's no way you can get on the bike and ride 400, yeah, 400, 450 watts um, to get onto a group and be technically good and have like clear clarity with what you're doing. It's, it's, I think that's the hardest thing is just kind of 
making sure you're, you're you're doing the right processes and stuff like that because uh when you're redlining like that you're making so many mistakes and in a way all the effort you're putting in in the swim is almost jeopardized somewhere else if you get a transition wrong or your bike's in the wrong gear after the the last bike it's it's those little things which are the things which add up in the end so i think uh yeah hayden putting that putting yeah putting the hammer down in a way in in that second run really kind of obliterated the field really yeah i love it man it was good Man, it was a good race. Yeah. You've got to go watch it, Alex. It was an unbelievable race. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's an unbelievable race across the board. It's incredible. And it's like the first time no, you've watched cool. one live, mate. That's because that's, that's we're still oh, stuck unreal. in the Oh, it's unreal. Very good. <laughs> it was unreal. It, it's been that great the whole time. You just haven't, haven't noticed it yet. But that, yeah, for sure, that, <laughs> I think that's the best race I think we've ever seen. And it's so good to have done it in Jersey. And now it sets up what is going to be an outstanding uh Championship round, I guess, in Malibu. More points on offer. Johnny Brownlee sitting atop, uh, besides the fact that he hasn't won a race. He's been super consistent. Obviously, he's got a one-point gap then on Hayden Wild, and then one point to Alex, and then two points back as Vincent Lewis will be uh, nursing that loss very um, very badly, I would imagine. So there's all to play for in Malibu, and, and you turn your attention to now is what Alex is going to be a uh, an open-water sea swim. It's a slightly less technical course. Have you had a chance to look at it? And or is it just more a, a, a one week at a time type thing? Yeah, it's definitely one week at a time. By the start of the at the start of the um, the series, I looked through all the courses, and uh, yeah, the course is definitely a lot less technical. It's got the little cyclocross, um, like snake uh, kind of yeah part of the course, which will be pretty exciting, um, and that will put a lot of people under pressure where, where you where you're positioned not so well in, in the bike pack and stuff like that. And the sea swims a t- totally different gravy to to any yeah anything we've done so far, which will which will um, definitely suit certain people and not others. So that will be exciting to see how everyone fares. And the eliminator is always unpredictable. The first race could go off absolutely full guns blazing, or it could be quite cruisy um, because I guess it's already sorted out quite quickly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be really exciting and a bit unpredictable. So I'm I'm looking forward to it, and it's a uh, Nice place to go as well. So. <laughs> for everyone except for Maka, who'll be stuck in the hotel room for another eight days. Uh, <laughs> lovely here. <laughs> as he's also a nice place. Yeah. You probably you probably see all the sites already, mate. Uh, you, it's just it's just about Netflix from now on. Um, let's go around. Uh, we're we're going to wrap it up now, uh, but let's go around and get everyone's predictions for who was going to be the championship winner uh, this t- in a week's time. So. Uh, are we all going to agree that Jess Learmonth is going to be the champion of the women's? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Annie. Yes, Maka. Yeah, yeah I, definitely. I, uh, yeah. yeah. Annie goes. I, I, but I, from my end, obviously, with Jess, with Georgia being a scorpion, mm-hmm. she's still in the hunt with the extra points. Yeah. She still looks remarkable. She's had a lot of bad luck in the series, okay? Like something's got to play her way in one of these races, and she's she's on form to do it. Flora Duffy's coming in for this race. You know, no one's talking about that. So the Olympic champion is is coming in. She's remarkable, skillfully on courses like this. She has, she's flawless. So she could she could upset the apple cart. But um, I'm going to go with GTB to get one of the wins um, in Malibu. And 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 having lived in 13 years in in Santa Monica, so it's my home away from home. I've spoken to a lot of my friends. They're expecting waves. So the surf report says there's there's some big waves coming. So that it's usually an Zuma Beach is a, an area that doesn't cop a lot of swell, but when there's a big wave running, you will get a little bit of a wave. So that can play, you know, it's usually a big shore dump. So that entry into the water or exit could be could be quite interesting for the athletes to navigate. So the good swimmers on the women's side will will, will definitely benefit. But yeah, you know, I, I think this is the one to beat. But I'm not gonna not gonna say that GTB can't win the series. Tim, what do you think? Who's going to win the women's? We'll go around again for the men's in a second. Yeah, I think Jess Jess is going to you know win the series, but I think uh, yeah GTB you know she she could win next weekend, and if Flora you know separates them, then GTB is yeah. going to win the series. But you know I think momentum's a powerful thing, and um, you know Jess is very you know, very understated in in you know the reflect you know how how well you know her own performances and I think that's a commendable thing and I think you know 
the funny thing is, is I asked if anyone's going to America with GTB and they said, yeah, Jess and John. So, you know, that's how, how close the three of them are. It's, which is, which is amazing to see. Um, so yeah, just as long as it's one of them, I think they both deserve it, deserve it, deserve it of it. But I definitely think momentum's going to carry Jess. Jess. Yeah. All right, Alex, pick, pick a, pick a country woman. <laughs> yeah, I definitely say uh, Jess is the one to beat in in the last um, going into the last race. But I don't know. I think it's going to be closer than you think. With uh, the likes of Flora put in the mix, if she can split the two, then I don't know what that does to the points. But that could make it a heck of a lot closer than you think. And I think. Uh, yeah, it could it could be exciting, definitely. Well, there's more points on offer as well, so there's bigger gaps between the top few, a couple of points between one, two, and three. I love, I just, I enjoy that answer. You didn't really give much of an answer at all to that, so I'm going to ask you <laughs> now for the men's. Do you think Alex Yee that Alex Yee can win the championship title? <laughs> uh, I definitely have far too much respect for all my competitors at the moment to be thinking about winning and. Uh, anything like that. I think for me, it's just a process type of uh, racing. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to put myself there. I think, uh, yeah, for me, Vince is the champion of this, and it this is a uh, this is Vince's now. So, I, I, I personally, I, I just like to see him do well because I have a lot of respect for him, and he's, yeah, and Johnny as well, and and everyone. To be fair, I just love. I just want it to be a good race. No, we all do. Who do you want to go bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one person you want. Who do you not I really like to point out this person. I don't want them to get hurt. I just want I them, like their emotions to get hurt. <laughs> well, okay, so now in front of Alex, let's get everyone's predictions. Let, let's remind everyone that Johnny's on 41, Hayden's on 40, uh, Alex is on 39, I think this is right, and then 37 is Vince. So, and there's more points on offer. So I think it's 20 points for a championship uh, for a race win and then 18 and 16, I think. Uh, so there's room for movement. So, Annie, we go back to you. Who wins the men's title and walks away with 100 grand or whatever it is? Right. Uh, Johnny Brownlee. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think just... I think it's it's going to be a different. Oh my god! Look at little Alex. So what team him. is oh Johnny god, in? No. I can't remember. Alex, uh, what team is Johnny? Uh, in? Uh, no. Uh, I think the I think the swim. It's it's this is a different race that we're looking at, right? It's different to the last three races we've seen because of the swim. Um, if the surf is up, as Mac has said, that, that's going to change it a lot um how does johnny brownlee go and surf not sure about that one um but he will be strong he's coming to himself he's really confident we were talking about it last night it's just great to see but he is going to be chased hard absolutely by alex by wild i think martin van reel is going to be a little bit stronger and let's not rule out vance on the weeks either because he's going to be good in that sort of swim you know he's going to go away perhaps have a little bit of a rest um and come back firing on all cylinders but it's going to be close for the top five and as per usual yes i am sitting on the bloody fence apart mm. from saying that i think johnny brown is going to be the one to beat in malibu no that's not sitting on the fence that's it right you've done it and what i particularly like there is you ask alex and alex goes oh i just want it to be a good race you know everyone just gives 100 <laughs> percent. you know every, we're all best friends it's just you know it's everything's great kumbaya etc and then Annie goes johnny and he goes <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be Becky. I oh, love it. Um, Maka, what do you think? Uh, can we see? I mean, yeah. is it? I mean, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, look, I, I think the series is going to be very hard to pull from Johnny Brownlee's um, hands right now. He, he's in amazing form. His consistency's there, even with the differences in points. He's going to be tough to beat. When I say there's a surf, it's a shore dump, so it's not going to play any havoc on the swimming out there. It's going to be how you navigate that that yeah. start and finish. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a you know a little bit of a wave as you come out of the water, depending on the waves. So I, and it's quite a bit of a run off the sand to the transition. I think that'll benefit Alex and and, and Johnny and 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 you know I think Matty Hauser will love that growing up on the beaches of the Gold Coast in that in that swim. But Johnny's going to be hard to beat. I expect Vincent to be up there. But for the overall race win, I'm going to go with Alex after yesterday's performance. The run is spectacular. I think, uh, like, honestly, as Tim said, you, you, your, your race yesterday was first class and, and, man, and you've come into your own. You, you really found some form. You're going to love this course in Malibu. And I just think the run, 
is is going to set yourself up for a win. And I think Johnny's going to be very, very close and take the series. I think I think Vincent's been wounded from to that yesterday's race. Mm. Um, he's down in the points. I think he'll he'll still play at the at the pointy end, but I don't think he's going to chase the, the podium as uh, chase the overall podium as as uh, overall win in the series like we, we anticipated last week after Munich. Alex, I just I got your message, and yes, I can isolate all the audio of Macca bigging you up, and you can use it as your ringtone, and I'll just I'll, I'll WhatsApp it to you. It's no problem whatsoever. And then agreed, I'll just call you call you every so often so you can listen to how good you are uh, in the lead up to Malibu. As you said, though, every every single bit of that is is a hundred percent correct. So um, why not go back to back in Jersey and Malibu on both sides of the Atlantic? Tim Don. I mean, Annie was extremely biased towards Johnny and the Cheetahs. Fair enough. Are you going to do the same thing uh, with the Eagles when we're talking about the round win next weekend and then the championship win? You know, I think the championship, Vince is not going to win the championship. Even if he wins the race, the, the second and third, they're going to, they're ahead of him and the point gap's too big for him. He's going to know that. So he, he's going to maybe race all out as opposed to race tactically. Um, as I said about the women's, momentum's a powerful thing. Um, you know, what does it say? Yeah, so I, I think Alex Alex is going to, you know, if he c- carries on being methodical with his approach to each race and, you know, travels well, I've got no reason why Alex can't do it. But a- Alex knows it's fine margins. And, you know, Johnny is the most decorated Olympian ever in our sport. So, you know... Um, when I was younger, I always wanted to beat Simon Lessig, but I wanted to beat him in a sprint finish, you know, like really beat him. I didn't want him to finish fourth or fifth. And, you know, Alex has just done that with arguably the most consistent athlete we've seen, minus his big brother. Um, so, yeah, I think momentum's great. I think Alex is going to gonna have a, have a great race there and finish on top of the podium, but it's going to be going to be fighting, fighting all the way. And he's an eagle, so I've got to... Yeah, they, fly, they fly high, man. <laughs> so Johnny's the most decorated Olympian... For now, that's what Alex was thinking. Just in well, I was just thinking yeah, history is well. history. Future, future is you know that's right. Yeah, future's there. Three years, three years. We're, we're going to rewrite history, absolutely. And I've got no doubt and every belief that that is going to happen in Paris. Well, there you go. What a way to finish. Uh, bang on the thirty-minute mark for that, Alex. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure you're thinking you made exactly the right decision in coming on the show. So thanks for coming on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband. Well. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> all right. My head's not out the door. That's it. That's it. Um, we all we all have that problem here anyway, mate. Um, that's going to wrap us up. Maka, thanks so much for making the time in your busy schedule. Uh, Annie, you actually have a busy schedule, so thank you. Tim, fantastic as always. Alex, thank you so much. Superleaguetriathlon.com is the place that you need to go for all the information, all the wash-up from the last three weeks. All the extra clips, the YouTube channel is uh, is full of all of the fantastic races we've had, including Alex's brilliant win yesterday. Uh, and then we lead up to Malibu. Check your local guides. All of the uh, the local broadcast info is on superleaguetriathlon.com. You can also watch it on YouTube. That is the Short Shoot Show. We'll be back once again to wrap it all up next week. Mm-hmm.